Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Kameem, I'm the Managing Director of Storm and uh, I'm here today just to give you 10 minutes on how to uh, help someone who might be choking. It could be a child, it could be an adult. And the reason for this is recently we've had the, the very sad and tragic tale of a small child, a small boy in Hull choking to death uh, in the primary school. And so really in the next 10 minutes I'm just going to show you the four techniques uh, I've been able to uh, provide some assistance to someone who might be choking. Uh, very powerful techniques and hopefully you can show this to the rest of your staff. The first thing is making sure you have adequate supervision in place, so particularly if you're in a school, making sure that you've got sufficient uh, kitchen staff or, or dinner staff who are available to make sure that su su uh, suitable supervision is placed over the children while they're eating. The next thing is also food preparation. Uh, the likes of grapes, uh, the likes of cherry tomatoes, indeed spaghetti, parma ham, or indeed uh, the likes of um, bacon must be cut appropriately. Certainly grapes and cherry tomatoes must be cut in two, and that's been a key point when it comes to, to safeguarding. The final thing in terms of the three is then some, uh, some techniques that your staff are suitably prepared and are fully aware in order to, uh, to assist someone who might be choking. When it comes to choking, there's two types of obstruction. Obstruction. There is a, a partial obstruction of the airway, which is where you can feel something in the back of the airway, and very quickly it can become a total obstruction. With a total obstruction, ladies and gentlemen, it is exactly that. You cannot tell someone you're choking, uh, and that's why one of the critical things is if you think or suspect someone is choking, uh, they clearly can't tell you, so therefore it's, it's to ask them, are you choking, or for them to acknowledge that. Uh, and that is very common with, with people who are in a choking situation. The other thing I just want to highlight, it's all about attitude of mind. If you are in a situation where you might be assisting someone else, then it's your attitude of mind that you will, you will and you are going to uh, dislodge that obstruction. And it's certainly your ability to think like, I am going to help and, and uh, I am going to intervene and I am going to solve this. Um, certainly it is not fully a group of the half-hearted. Um, and in the next techniques, I'm going to show you how you can, how you can effectively go about that. There's four techniques that we use when we try to uh, dislodge and try to assist someone who might be in a choking situation. The first one is a little bit what we call self-help. Uh, we're very good ourselves with our two big bellows here. Uh, we're very good at being able to uh, provide assistance to ourselves. And, and it's a situation we've all been in, in providing a little bit, a bit of help to ourselves when someone says, well, did you go around down the wrong way? And it's then just assisting someone that might have just uh, taken something down the wrong way. They coughed it up themselves, and again, it's just a little bit of uh, assistance, get them a glass of water, and a little bit of reassurance. The next technique is where it's a now a little bit more intervention is required. Obviously, it's now a little bit more serious. You've tried the self help, the person tried to help themselves as well by trying to cough it up or trying to dislodge it themselves, and it clearly isn't working. Sometimes that person might be able to reach in if it's like a piece of armor ham or some uh, bacon rind or something like that, they might be able to actually reach in and get it themselves. Uh, however, we're going to assume that we're past that stage now, we're going to uh, require something a little bit more interventional. What we're going to do, we're going to apply some direct thrusts in between the two shoulder blades here. And we're going to do a series of three to four bouts of this. First thing is one of the hands is going to be across the uh, front of the chest. We're going to apply some quite direct let flows in between the shoulder blades. And this is quite simply to try and dislodge if you draw a line through the shoulder blades, through and beyond, that's the sort of place. So it's going to look like this. Now for children who might be in a, a restaurant or maybe, maybe at home, uh, perhaps the use of a chair, and by bending the child to set the over your knee, it's almost like 45 degrees. Again, supporting the, the chest with one hand, and again, so it's one, two, three, four, check, 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 one, two, three, four, check. check. So, so far, we've done a little bit of self help and assistance with self help. We've then done the Back blasts or the back, uh, back blows in between the two shoulder blades, and going about three or four bouts of that again with the mental intention to absolutely dislodge whatever obstruction is in that airway. The next thing we're going to do is what's called, more commonly known as the Heimlich maneuver or the abdominal thrust. What you're going to see here is by screwing up one hand 
onto the soft part of the tongue, just above the, uh, the tummy button. There, you go. the other hand is going to squash it in. And we're going to do like a J movement. So we're going to push our hand in and up underneath the diaphragm in order to get the <gasps> some sort of bl blow or uh, thrust in order to get the obstruction out. So it's going to look like this. So you screw one hand up, place it onto the, to the side, to, onto the, uh, the soft part of the, of the tongue, underneath the diaphragm, and then we're going to pull up towards the shoulders. The reality of this is that you, you will be launching yourself and also the, the patient or the casualty off the ground. So it's going to look like this. It's going to <laughs> The additional thing to note about this as well, in terms of the Heimlich manoeuvre or the abdominal thrust procedure, is that uh, you're going to turn side on, so the hip into the casualty, the, to the back of the casualty, and the intention is to lift them off the ground. So it's going to look like, like this, so squashing the, the, the fist in with the other hand, and then lifting up in a series of thrusting movements back up towards your shoulders. So, and the two of you should actually come off the ground. It is quite interventional. So it's one, two, three. For larger individuals that you might not be able to physically get your hands around in front of the tongue there to, to squash in and, and squash up towards the, uh, the abdomen and therefore the diaphragm, is that you would do uh, across the chest. And this is equally applicable for uh, pregnant ladies or indeed uh, rather large or larger individuals that might not, you might not be able to do that with your hands. So again, so the same would be one, two, three, one, two, three. Anything to compress the lungs in order to try and get the obstruction up and out of the airway. The final technique is where all of these techniques have failed. So, so far we've had self-help, we've also had back glass, reaching the shoulder blades, we've done the abdominal thrust, the final one now is the reality is the person will now initially go unconscious and then actually stop breathing. Once they've stopped breathing very quickly, the heart will stop. So what we're into, into now is sustaining them just pure and simply with cardiac compressions. They're chest compressions only. So clearly we're not going to do any mouth to mouth, but there's so going to be chest compressions and it'll look like this. So our casualty or our child, uh, maybe in a, in a in a playground situation or a primary school situation uh, has now collapsed and uh, we've tried all the other interventions. The final one now is we now just, we want to keep the heart sustained, we want to keep the brain fed with oxygen. So we're now going to be into uh, CPR. So again, for those who might recall, um, first identify where you consider the centre of the, the chest is. Uh, with the palm of your hand or whatever you feel comfortable, that's absolutely fine. Put it along the sternum, interlock the hands and then get up onto, onto your knees. So we're now into providing chest compressions. The chest compressions are going to be 120 per minute, so that's about two per second, to stay alive or, or indeed Nelly the elephant, whatever you might recall. So these good compressions, four to six centimetres, obviously that would be an adult or maybe a little less, obviously for a child. So the compressions will be just sustaining blood supply to the brain to keep them, uh, to keep them uh, alive. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let me just recap, there are four techniques that we use. First and foremost, you might recall, we've got a little bit of self-help. The next one is a little bit more interventional. Is a back blast in between the shoulder blades. One, two, three, four, check. One, two, three, four, check. One, two, three, four. The next one then is where we're now, we're now getting a little bit more serious. We clearly, it has not dislodged. So we're going to apply what's called the Heimlich Manoeuvre, indeed the abdominal thrust. By screwing up one fist, Placing onto the onto the soft part of the tongue, the squash is going to be one, two, three, four. Therefore, the heart has stopped and start doing 120 beats per minute. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen. Just four techniques. Also, just bear in mind to make sure you've got adequate supervision and also the preparation of food, particularly grapes, uh, cherry tomatoes, and any sort of long stringy food that acts as spaghetti, parma ham, or indeed a bacon rind. They're all things which traditionally can cause. Uh, choking in children or indeed adults. Um, I hope this has been of, uh, of use to you. Please show it around and uh, just make sure that your staff are suitably and adequately trained. Thank you very much. My name is Jonathan Cook.